tremendous performance. Run keeps going on. Fulham's run has been marvellous. Yeah, a special night for us. I think I think we deserve the win. We we know how difficult it is to play against Chelsea. They are in a difficult situation at the moment, but they they have a good team. They have a really good team. Um, it was a special night for me, especially to play against you know against them. And uh, yeah, I think we deserve it, and uh, we have to carry on. We have to carry on. You didn't celebrate big time there. You, you kept it respectful because of the seven years he had at Chelsea. I'm sure. Amazing, amazing seven years there. I have a big respect for for the fans and also for the club, the club people that work works there. And uh, yeah, but I'm um, now I'm play for full. I have to do my best. And uh, yeah, it was a special night. Tim joined us, a special night, William says, we can hear it behind us. In tremendous form at the moment, that run, and the performance tonight as well, the proper fight. Yeah, listen, the last couple of games we've had to show a, a little bit more fight, a little bit more grit, a little bit more determination, and, um, you know, when we can show that side of our game and, and still still play well with the ball, um, you know, it, it bodes well for, for what we're doing, and um, it's a big reason for, for the kind of run we're on right now. And there was a lot of talk about Mitrovic, whether you were going to miss him tonight. Of course, you didn't. I told you. I told you there were goals in the team. Um, you know, a guy's, guy's stepping up. Willie, obviously, is scoring the goal. Um, Vinny with a, a, a big header to, to put us on, on top. And, um, you know, we're, we're not a one-trick pony. We're, we, we definitely have the, the guys in the, in the team that, can, uh, that can, can finish and put the ball away. You're above Liverpool in the table right now. It's pretty impressive. It is what it is. It's, uh, as, as the manager says, it's a... It's a consequence of, of everything that we're doing, um, the, the hard work that we're doing on the training ground and, um, you know, the togetherness of, of the guys in the club and, you know, the fans. It's, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, we're not looking at the table, but, um, you know, we're, we find ourselves in a very good position. Congratulations, Tim. Congratulations, William. Well played. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, and with that, the pair then celebrate with the uh, home fans, and quite rightly so. It's party time at Craven Cottage because, well, Sean, you know from your days at Chelsea what that rivalry is like between the West London rivals. I mean, days very rarely come Fulham's way like this. Yeah, they, it very rarely comes, but Craven Cottage is a very tough place to go in, in this derby. Um, I remember some disappointing times and some good times there, and one of them being me and Joe Cole, we didn't actually do too much wrong in a game, we just wasn't getting a ball. I remember Mourinho taking us off after 35 minutes, 25 minutes. Really? In the first half. So fault, it's man. a hard place to go. Jay, he's going to say, say he said it's his my fault. <laughs> but we just wasn't getting a ball, so we wasn't yeah. being able to affect the game. And Mourinho saw something, changed it, we come away and win the game. But it's a tough place to go. And like you said before the show, it's, it's, it's a new Fulham good manager and they're flying with confidence and they, they took advantage of a Chelsea team when Chelsea didn't take advantage of the chances and opportunities they had. Yeah, do you mean, and a word, word for that man, William, who, yeah. you know, who's having a very different spell in the Premier League to his last spell with Arsenal. Yeah. He, he, he's playing with a smile on his face and he's still got that quality about him, although his legs may have gone at this age. Well, it didn't look like it today, to be honest. I feel like when you... Yeah, I think, like... When you get to that sort of stage of your career where you, you're experienced, you can manage your running, you can do stuff in that short burst, but when he gets into these positions here, nothing changes for me. It doesn't matter how old you are. This is all about sharpness. And I mentioned about slowing people's feet down, and he always does this thing where he goes to shoot and he stops, slows defenders, and then he changes speed again. Mm. And he's, just, he's, always, he's always been good at that, and I don't think he'd ever lose it, to be honest, you know, regardless of his age, just here just to get at half a yard, just to get his shot off. But I did mention about defending. I just feel like Aspilicueta, he's got to show him wide. And, and I, feel, I feel if he shows him wide, he's so wide that he can't even shoot. I think he just, he crosses it, he has to cross it with his left foot. So he's terrible defending, but at the same time, really sharp in the way he moves the ball and gets his shot off. But there is a touch of fortune about the deflection, clearly, that goes past Kepa, ultimately. But actually, you talk about Aspilicueta and William, and clearly they know each other. From the, from the Chelsea days, and that's why you feel he should have done better in that position. Yeah, the, the, JD hit a nail on the head. You've got to show him left. The most he can do is get across the box, but yeah. he was the third error. Mm. The first error comes from, obviously, the young lad, Hall, could have cleared it down the line. Mm. Then after then, the ball comes in, Chalabar unmarked. I don't know what he's doing with that sort of header, but he just kind of flicks it, not knowing what's around him. If he had realised he was on, 
in a box on his own. He might have done something completely different, and he didn't. And then obviously, then it gets to the the Aspie part where he should have just shown him line. But even though all of those things happen, it's still a lot for William to do. And I think he, he kind of, in a way, a little bit rolled back the years mm. of what we used to see him do on a regular basis. And when you, you do things like that and you force shots, you will get the odd deflection. So he made all the luck there and they, he deserved what he got there. Trailing at the break, what did you make of Chelsea's response early in the second half? It, for me, it was the perfect response that you could ask for as a manager. Of course, the, the great ball in from Mount. And it is, it's a bit scrappy, but they had the chances in the game before. And as, as JD said <laughs> off air, as you can see, the ball don't even touch the back of the net, so they're obviously struggling. <laughs> the ball a little bit the back that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's going to say that because he's a Spurs fan, yeah. so <laughs> I'm going to fight the battle for Chelsea right now. But yeah, it's a goal. I think at that time and through the first half, I thought they deserved the goal. But after then, you know, you know what happens as the game goes on and it changes hands. Yeah, and um, you know, you were both waxing lyrical about new recruit, João Felix. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, you know, five <laughs> shots, most of any Chelsea play in that first half, of a first half in the Premier League this season. And then in the second, a very different story. What about the yeah. tackle that resulted in his red card on Premier League debut? Yeah, it's a sending off. I think what happens here, it sort of like looks like a pattern that they've worked in training. The ball goes into him, it's sort of like a bad touch. And I think it's sort of like, because it's a bad touch, I think he tries to get onto it. But as he makes contact, like he knows, like he knew straight away. That is, it's a sending yeah, off. Don't you think there, with Koulibaly's ball, in the yeah. centre of midfield, you can't, like, the ball's so high, yeah. it's whipped in, there's too much power on it, like, you're arcing a lot. So if that, that, that kind of helped towards that bad first touch. Yeah, yeah. But he's got, to, he's got to know that he can't, you have to just pull out. Even though, to be honest, when you watch it back, it does look like, tw at the end, he pulls out a little bit, but there's contact and there's studs, he's stud shot, so it's, it's, it's definitely sure. a Can you off. explain his decision-making in that split moment? Was he trying too hard, maybe, to make an impression, considering it was his debut? Um, I've been there. I haven't been sent off, luckily, because obviously the rules yeah. were a lot different back then, but sometimes when you have a bad first touch, your over-eagerness to get on the end of it or to try yeah. and win it back, you reach. But he just didn't expect the defender to get there as quick as he did. But look, if you look before the defender touches the ball, his foot is basically in level with the ball. He looks like he's going to get the ball, but he pokes it away. And after that happens, it's, it's kind of game over in a way. Yeah. As a result, he misses the next three games. That's Crystal Palace, Liverpool and Fulham again. Already short on numbers is Graham Potter. That's the last thing he needs, is it not? Like I said, how's your luck? <laughs> As a manager, I think what? I think that's nearly nine, ten players that are possibly starters oh, wow. all out of the game. Yeah. Now, I get there's a lot of pressure on him, but I think, to some degree, everybody around the world needs to understand what he's actually dealing with right now. Because I've never seen that happen to any manager before where their 10 possible starters are out, or out injured or suspended. Yeah. And, that could change, and that could change the training sessions. In terms of numbers, that could completely change your training session. What you want to do in terms of, like, I don't know, like a preparation for the game, Match prep. Um, That's interesting. So what, physicality, you have to rein back a bit? Yeah, not even, not even yeah, of course, because you, you have to, because it's, it's, it's like, you're so frightened of the next injury. And in terms of like numbers, you might want to do, I don't yeah. know, like a tactical MV11 or whatever it is, and yeah. you can't do it because you haven't got the numbers. So it does change everything. And we'll, we'll talk about Graham Potter's injury situation, uh, you know, in, in a little while as well, because Dennis Zakari also hobbled off, let's not forget, with a knee injury before that red card for Jao Felix. But what about Fulham's winner? And what a time for Carlos Vinicius to pick up his first Fulham goal. But it's good, though. I think if you look at his movement, um, not much, it just gets him between the two centre-halves, to be honest, um, where he should be, where you'd say... And then spoke about the goalkeeper's position. I think if the goalkeeper stays on his line and just covers his near post... Um, but what about then, Vinicius' movement here? The, the movement's brilliant because what he, what he does is he gets into that, that zone. I, I love to call it the red zone where you're going to score. Um, gets in between the two centre halves and you know it's good movement, but at the same time the goalkeeper has to stay on his line and cover the near post and then make it difficult for the attacker. Because if the goalkeeper's covered the near post, he has to go back across and he has to generate the power to go back across, which is always difficult. And it just ends up finishing an empty net. What did you think of Kepper's part in that goal, Sean? I think he initially makes the wrong decision, but instead of just fully committing, because I feel like sometimes as an attacker. If somebody jumps in front of a ball, you kind of lose flight 
of the ball. So that could put him off a little bit. Mm. Instead of just once he's made the error, instead of just carrying through with that error and just saying, look, I need to just try and block out as much of the ball so he can't see it as possible, yeah. he then makes another one in retreating and gives him basically an open goal to head. He's kind of in no man's land at that point. Exactly. No. It's a, and he kind of he kind of shot himself in the foot. Like, I, like Jao Felix, he gets sent off, but he committed to that decision. It's wrong, but he committed to it. Mm. It's, it's over. Whereas I think Kepa just didn't, he didn't know what he wanted to do. He went, then he came back, but, and it was too late. As a result for Chelsea, it's now one Premier League win in nine games in all. What does their manager, Graham Potter, think of it all? Here he is now. Graham, that's been a, a very tough night for you. How can, how can you sum that up? I thought we started quite well. We had a really good chance early. Um, felt in decent control of the game. Uh, won the ball back high, created some opportunities, maybe missed the last pass. A couple of mistakes lead to their goal. Um, and then obviously, we're, you, you know, you've got to dig in a bit. Um, I thought we responded second half well. And then the red card is obviously um, changes the game in terms of makes it more difficult for us. I thought the application when we're down to ten was was really really good. Uh, disappointed with the with the goal because it's uh, we can do better with that. And then that's what's cost us. Um, so I'm really disappointed to lose. The, the turning point being the red card. I mean, any argument about that? I can I can see why his, his blood was up. He kind of lunged lost yeah. possession. Yeah, and, and uh, you know there's a reaction um, from the side, and, and it's a forwards tackle, shall we say? And there was too much malice in it, and I think got too much of the player. But I, I yeah, I understand why he's been. He'd off. been playing pretty well up to mm. that point. He looked very sharp. Yep. you're going to lose him now for three games, aren't you? Yeah, it's another blow. It's uh, the hits just keep coming at the moment. That's how it is. But um, I thought he was really good. You could see his quality in the game. So obviously it's disappointing, doubly disappointing for us. Talking about hits, Zakaria, is that another injury? To uh, I think so, yeah. I think I think that's uh, yeah, it's, a, it's another one. We'll see how he is. It's just one after another, isn't mm. it? Yeah, it is at the moment. Um, it's tough, that's for sure. Uh, I feel for the supporters and I feel for the players and feel for everybody connected with the club. It's a tough moment for us. And what can you do? Just keep battling on and hope something clicks, something happens? Yeah, like I said, uh, there was some positives there. A um, couple of decent opportunities for us and chances and just miss, miss, miss passes, final bits. Um, but we have to keep working. There's nobody we can't. There's no other solution. You've got to keep working, stay together, keep focused, move to the next match, and try to get the three points. Thanks, Graham. Thank you. Yeah, Graham Potter looking pretty deflated there, and clearly he said it's just another hit after hit on the injury front. One win in the last nine, Sean. I mean, it doesn't make for great reading for Chelsea supporters. That only victory in that nine is against Bournemouth. But how much pressure is he under as a result? I don't personally think he is. I think between him and the owners, I feel like they would have had an understanding and this is, this is a year to build a new Chelsea, per se, um, a bit different to the um, Roman era, where most so probably... Can they, so you're saying he can afford to write off this season then? I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say write off, but I think this is a season for him to help rebuild Chelsea in a different way to what we're used to seeing. Mm. I think the end game is to get to where they already are, but I think they, they still need to rebuild. They need to invest in young players, which they're doing really well at the minute. And he, he needs to get his way of playing across the table. And for me, in the first half, like he said in his interview, I've, I thought they attacked well, they created a chance, they didn't take their chances. And two errors cost them two goals, which they eventually lost the game to. Mm. So for me, that it sounds silly, but I feel like, especially attacking, there's been massive improvements there Yeah, for me, personally. Yeah. Jermaine? You've got to give him time. You don't just become a bad coach overnight. Not too long ago, everyone's raving about Graham Potter. So we can't, you can't sit here and say, oh, you know, he's a bad coach or, I don't know, maybe the players... I think he needs time. Mm. And, and the fact of the matter is, he's too many injuries. Like, it's... it's you, if he's can got, you judge anybody on this You can't. Injury? Injuries to key players yeah. and top players. So I believe if they had the... If he had, if he had those players... They'd have more points on the board. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. He, he definitely needs time because he's a top coach and he will be a top manager there. Yeah. I mean, that's the list. I mean, it doesn't get more comprehensive than that, does it? I mean, that's right across the board. That's arguably your two best wing backs, backup striker and Brozier. 